My name is Beth Ellen Davis. I'm a developmental behavior pediatrician at the University of Washington, where I currently am the director of the University of Washington Leadership, Education, and Neurodevelopmental Disabilities Program. Well, currently the program that I run is to teach graduate students of all different disciplines how to care for children with special health care needs, specifically neurodevelopmental disabilities. So I will work with pediatricians, um, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, nutritionists, social workers, um, while they're in their training to learn how to work with children, say with autism or with developmental delays. Military Connected Children with Special Health Care Needs has been my entire career. So I have worked with children with special health care needs um, since I was a resident in um, in pediatrics and then did a fellowship for three more years to understand children with developmental disabilities and then have been active duty my entire career um, in the Army. And so I care for children and their families and help them um, with their daily lives uh, every uh, in every aspect of my job. And so that piece has uh, been very important to try to understand where are the gaps and how can we support these families better and what are some things that could make a real difference for them and not leave it up to the whims of wherever they move or whatever assignment they're at. I think one of the first things that we could do that would go a long way is to just find out when families are answering surveys or part of studies whether they have a military connection. Um, currently, we don't ask families on even the national surveys uh, whether they're part of a military family. And I think that could be done with fairly easily and would help us start to generate a body of um, information that we could study further and develop better research questions in the future. I have so many special families that have taught me more than I've taught or helped them, I think. Um, definitely um, a family that comes to mind is one that I've, um, a young girl who I've taken care of for the last um, 14 years. She has um, autism spectrum disorder and profound disabilities. And um, the way that her parents advocate for her and care for her and have learned how to um, find a village to surround around her has taught me so much that it's not about her medical care, that that's just one piece of her health and well-being, being, and that really her her whole life is made up of all these other very rich pieces that are as important or more important than me. And um, I think more than anybody, she's taught me how much it takes a village for individuals with profound need um, to have meaningful and happy lives. It kind of depends on you know, what they're looking for. Definitely if it's a military family and they're not sure, if they're new to the military and they're not sure where they should go or who they should talk to, they should go to the website Military One Source. It has so much information. There's a special needs toolkit there um, that you can download and kind of walk through and learn the language of military connected children with special health care needs. And then there's some other resources that are much more valuable for specific conditions. And of course, I'm interested in health care. Um, but I think that parents who are knowledgeable about their child's condition can ask better questions and advocate for their child when they visit their primary care provider who has very time limited visits um, can ask the types of questions that um, the physician will be able to respond to without having to kind of dig through what is it that they're, the family's asking. So being more knowledgeable, I think, helps everybody um, obtain better care for the, for the child. So parents of military-connected children with special health care needs need to know that there are people and programs and supports available. 
um, to help. It's not going to be one phone call. It's not going to be sometimes the easiest thing to obtain. But um, I would say that parents need to to think about what they need for their child or what they would like for their child and then start asking for it because I, I feel that there are services that perhaps we underutilize for military connected children with special health care needs such as certain child care. Parents think well, no one can take care of my child. Well, ask. Um, or parents say, what about a, a summer camp program? ask. You know, many areas have unbelievable summer experiences for children with all different kinds of special needs. Um, and so I think a lot of families are kind of overwhelmed when they get to a new duty station or um, overwhelmed because they're on the base and they don't know the community outside the base. And I would say, ask the family resources center, the family support programs, the child care centers. I think there's a lot of resources for families with children with special health care needs. Child serving providers need to take a little extra time with families of children with special health care needs. It cannot be the five minute or the 10 minute visit. That it's easy for me to say that because I get a little more time as a specialist, but even when I'm doing general pediatrics, I schedule the patient who I know is gonna have some behavioral issues or needs, needs more time, I schedule them at the end of the day or before the lunch break so that I can allow that visit to go a little longer. I think um, it, as clinicians, we go a long way with building rapport with our families and they're dealing with whatever problem they're dealing with every day, all day long. And we're only hearing about it for 10 or 15 minutes. Why not take a few extra minutes? I think military connected children with special health care needs um, are a small piece of a very large population of individuals in the United States. Um, and because of that, we think that military children with special health care needs often um, are have all the same types of needs. And I would just say that they're very diverse. And they're as individual as anyone else. And we need to understand what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what 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 needs they have and what strengths they have, what things they don't need. Um, so I would say to the community that military connected children with special health care needs uh, are diverse and individual and uh, benefit from lots of different services that are available to them. I think one thing that I didn't talk about in my talk that I feel pretty strongly about um, is that individuals who are care providers, pediatricians, perhaps family medicine providers who have trained in the military or worked in the military know about the military programs. And I think if we don't maintain that group or that cadre of providers, we're going to lose um, a, a wealth of resources for military connected children with special health care needs. As we create medical homes around the country, I think continuing to train and um, have serve, have military pediatricians and other child serving providers is an important part of the mix of the workforce.